right. So as a quick recap, you already know your big year is a digital platform that inspires global connections and social change. And so through their impact fellowship, they support youth in skills development and career growth related to the SDGs. Um, so for my background, I am a psychology and English graduate with about five-ish years experience in healthcare administration. Um, I also volunteer with a lot of climate education organizations in my community. I was a panelist at the United Nations Ecosoft Youth Forum last month, and I run a scientific communication project about climate change and motorsport with my friends. So obviously I know you, but not everyone on the platform does. And since we learned so much from other people's experiences, I wanted to ask, what was your big year that inspired where you are today? So my name is Eddie, and I'm the singer and violinist of a Swedish metalcore band called Imminence. Love that band. <laughs> <laughs> and so your big year, what was, I don't know, maybe a defining moment for you that kind of pushed you into this career path? You mean in general or just uh, for this year particularly? Um, in general, in general. So the concept of your big year is that one moment or that period of time that kind of put you on a trajectory forward and as you okay. know where you are here. Yeah, um, I started getting into music when I was pretty young. Uh, I started playing violin at the year of uh, at the age of five. Um, I went to an open music school, and uh, first I wanted to play something like drums um, or guitar, but I was too young for for that school, and uh, so they they allowed me to start playing violin. So it was kind of a um, yeah, it, it wasn't really planned out from the beginning it was just it just happened and um when i was a teenager i got into heavy music uh, rock metal music and uh we we started a band just playing cover songs and uh that eventually you know you jumped through band to band and then eventually we started what became imminence and um i i can't really say that there was one defining moment it just felt like for me that it was a calling in a way that I felt a really, really strong connection to music. And I just knew that this is something that I want to do or something that I have to do. Mm -hmm. And I very much relate to not being big enough to play the bass or the drums. That's how I got into violin as well. <laughs> <laughs> Common to your path. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, that's perfect. All right. so. Shifting the conversation to why I brought you here today is sustainable merchandising. Um, so Imminence, you guys have run a sustainable web shop since 2019, according to your website, um, yeah. which I have definitely purchased from many times. Yeah. <laughs> so when and what exactly inspired you to move towards developing a sustainable merch store as yeah. opposed to previously? Um we talked about it a lot um before that, you know, we always felt like we wanted to have better quality in our merchandise and we felt that the the best way to go is is making a conscious decision to make merchandise that has less impact on the environment and um, has better working conditions for the people manufacturing the clothes and um, it, it just felt like the the right thing to to do for us mm -hmm. And so what were some of like the major challenges that you came up across when you were going through the transition? And sort of, I guess there's a lot of learning and development that has to go into sustainable production. So what was that learning process like? Um, obviously our biggest obstacle was the pricing um, because if you look at it, it's, it, it almost costs you the double um, to moving to sustainable merchandise and, and organic merchandise when you're just talking about the, the, the blanks themselves, so to say. Uh, this was, of course, a big issue, um, but we also made a decision that, you know, this is just what we want to do. Maybe we need to charge a little bit more for our merchandise, but we felt confident that this was something that people would catch on to. Like when they get a shirt from us, they would feel um, they would feel that they they got a really good quality. They could feel uh, good about their merchandise, you know, in a, in a conscious way. Mm -hmm. 
And so do you have like limits on production when you're creating items? I know for the box sets, you guys have limits, but do you have that for also like t-shirts, um, that sort of thing? And how do you choose? Well, since um, we, we use a producer, so to say, um, called Stanley Stella from Germany. So we don't actually manufacture or order the manufacturing ourselves. We just buy the blanks from, from the supplier. Uh, which allows us, you know, to not overproduce anything. And um, when it comes to choosing on a design, we actually never set a cap unless we say, like, this is a limited edition for some reason. Um, so we, we usually start by printing a smaller batch, uh, put it on our web shop and see how it goes. And if we feel that there's a demand for it, we will produce more from that design. Mm -hmm. So then it kind of eliminates the the bigger process of like reduce like waste managing your waste production since you're yeah. being very intentional with how many you're producing. Yeah. Um, so in general, what do you do with items when they aren't sold, for example? Like say if you haven't finished an entire batch. Um, what happens is that they are actually just still on the web shop. And we're just basically waiting for them to, to sell out. And uh, sometimes we bring them to the live shows as well. And I found that everything will, will kind of clear out in time. Um, some, some things, there are some batches where you maybe, maybe um, overestimated or um, so you end up with a lot of, of overstock uh, and it might take some time to get rid of it, but eventually it all usually clears out. So we don't really have to do anything about it more than just let it take care of itself. But mm -hmm. we try all the time to um, not have an overstock, obviously, but um, sometimes- Things happen. You miss, yeah, you do miscalculations, especially when it comes to touring and, and live scenarios. It's mm -hmm. a bit much harder to count. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so also there's a major conversation that's been going around on social media where venues have been taking large portions of cuts from merch sales. So you're a band on tour, obviously, and you've been pretty outspoken about the issue with that. Um, do you think that in these sort of practices, this extractivist practice, there's less incentive for bands to follow in the same footsteps as yours with sustainable merch production? I think absolutely this is... Um... An, an obstacle for bands to to do it the way that we do it because we're not willing to compromise on on the quality um and by this initiative that we're running um so e even if we're coming to tours we're gonna get the same shirts as you do from the eminence web shop um because that's what we want to do but obviously it is a huge problem when you have really high merch cuts from the venues because they don't leave you with much profit but imagine, you know, if you're like us, if you're on a, a supporting band, um, like we were for In Flames, we kind of have to set the prices according to everyone else on, on the package. I mean, we could have sold them more expensive, but it doesn't really make sense. And what happens is that we're left with much less money or profit from each shirt than all the other bands. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to... I mean, I, I, I won't compromise on that point from, from our standpoint, but I think it's important that we that we lift this discussion and push push this forward um, with merch cuts just being completely unreasonable, at least in, in, in the rates that they are currently or, or what you can see right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a conversation that needs to ele be elevated exploitation on so many levels um so yeah. it's really important that you guys continue speaking out about that and i hope that also this platform is a good position where other people can learn about that um yeah. so moving on to one of the last questions is about organic con cotton which is what you guys use when you're producing your t-shirts your hoodies etc um do you feel like in a way that having to pay so much more for your blanks limits you in terms of when you're coming up with design concepts with a designer or do you think that instead that makes it a more intentional process that is more meaningful in a way 
I definitely think it's more meaningful and I usually never look at it in, in that way. Um, I, I try to see the design for what it is and sometimes you, um, maybe there's a different type of blank that you want to use that is more expensive because it might be a heavier or a special kind of design. Um, so for, for us, it's not really limiting because I feel that the, the people or our fans that buy from, from our web shop are pretty aware at this point what type of quality of merchandise they're getting. And I think that they are comfortable paying a little bit more than for some other bands. Mm -hmm. And so do you have any, like a bunch of like design concepts that maybe you haven't gotten around to producing in that met because of the process that you go through? Or is it kind of like you already have a good idea of what you wanted to produce and you've put it out already so far? Well, it's usually just, um, we, we take it kind of one step at a time, depending on where we are at the moment. Um, usually we tie things around releases of new music uh, and just kind of pan out the year of, okay, this is kind of what we would like to do. And then we develop that as we go along, basically. So now I don't really have a full set of designs uh, sitting. It's just, uh, we'll, we'll have to see a little bit. It also depends on, you know, coming back to this thing with overstock obviously it's important to have new designs but if there's a lot of stock on the web shop uh, on the designs we're currently having maybe we wait a little bit before we bring something new out but again it depends on what we're doing and what the narrative is and i think for us it's really important that it fits into our narrative because we also want that the merchandise is meaningful in a way of being connected to to our music in a meaningful way. Yeah, absolutely. So finally, do you have any final message or advice for others, especially the young fellows that are also part of this program that might be interested in pursuing sustainable fashion? I think we we all can, can do better and uh, should really strive towards this. And, you know, there, there's only upsides from it when it comes to like environmental impact and and climate and conditions for for the people working in in manufacturing these clothes i think it's the right thing to do i know that it can be a little bit scary when it comes to the pricing but i think that it's important to communicate what you want to do to your followers and to your fans or your buyers or whatever you may have um, so that they know as well that you really care about these things. And that's maybe why it's a little bit more expensive. But I think that in the long term, it has a really good effect as well, because as soon as your followers kind of pick up on that, then they're going to, I think that they are more than happy to come back again um, because of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I feel in a way you guys are very inspirational for other people who are also maybe not engaged in sustainable practices yet, but just also just seeing the card that you guys put in your merchandise as well. It's like a flag if people don't normally think about that. It's it's really important what you guys are doing. Um, yeah. So those are all my questions for today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy, busy schedule um, <laughs> to talk about the sustainable practices with not only me, but so many other people. Um, so I will stop the recording now. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to, to talk with you and to talk about what we're doing here.